I thought I knew Brad pretty well. Well, what drew me back into this was when Brendan Dassey's release was appealed. I mean, that's political suicide. You know, why, why would Brad do such a thing? And I, I knew there was something missing. I just couldn't put my finger on it. Well, when I started digging into this again after being completely blown away at Brad appealing the case, I stumbled onto the missing piece I was looking for. It came to be known, and that missing piece was an author from Atlanta, Georgia, named Chad Keller. Uh, honestly, if indictments come from this, Chad Keller deserves the Presidential Medal of Freedom for what he's found. Hell, I didn't even find it, and I'm on the inside. Keller's book exposes the deep-seated political corruption in Wisconsin involving numerous top-tier government players. Behind it, and everything crosses the desk of former Wisconsin Attorney General Peg Lautenschlager. It's about the friendship between Jerome Buting and Peg Lautenschlager that formed behind closed doors. This will go down as one of the utmost conflict of interest scandals in any murder trial in United States history. So the real question here, is Brad Schimmel being duped, or is Brad purposely sweeping things under the rug? It does beg the question, is there anyone of integrity left in the Wisconsin Department of Justice? Making a murderer basically told the story of corrupt cops that framed Stephen Avery and his nephew for the 2005 murder of Teresa Halbach. It's about what went on, and Keller states in his book, if you believe the evidence was planted, then it had to get there somehow. To start from the beginning, and this story doesn't begin in a fire pit, it doesn't begin on Avery Road, it begins 148 miles away in the Wisconsin State Capitol. Because in order to see what really happened, you have to look with better eyes than that. You have to look beyond <laughs> Avery Road, Beauting and the Beast, the unheard political story behind the scenes of Stephen Avery's 2007 make-believe trial.